So for you, here's a home practice to start with, even before we get into more, because I want you to leave with some little nuggets. And one of the first home practices you can do, what I do is it's easier to observe the moment to moment contact with our mood state from moment to moment and during the day than it is to observe our mood over time, which is one of the ways we think about it in mental health. So over time, you will eventually notice a difference, but the most perhaps gratifying or immediate way to start is to do a 24 hour chart for yourself. So you can wake up tomorrow, make a note of what time you wake up, and then write down everything you eat, drink and smoke for 24 hours. And when you note it, just notice, are you noticing it with your five senses? How's your energy? How's your mood? And then go to sleep and notice how you slept and make a note of that. And that's your 24 hour um, recall there. And I invite you to just give that a try and see what you feel. My philosophy in Nourish Your Mood is that each one of us can be our own best teacher and guide. So that's some of the mindfulness aspect. And then what's the evidence-based aspect? What's the research aspect? So one of the things I can share with you is that um, I have um, a favorite book that I wanted to show you. And um, when I practiced with this, it probably was showing up backwards. So it probably looks backwards to you too. It looks like a mirror image. So this is, uh, you could get a mirror and reverse it, but I'll tell you what this is. This is Nutrition Essentials for Mental Health by Leslie Korn. Um, and she's really wonderful. And you know, uh, Leslie Korn and Kelly Brogan and Mark Hyman and so many of the different people that have gotten involved in this field, um, just like myself, started from our own healing journey where something that we were doing as professionals was no longer serving enough to take care of our own needs what, around our own mental health and our own wellness. And we reached the limits of our paradigm and started to say, I need to learn more. So um, these are some of the people I've really enjoyed studying with. And it's starting to become a little bit more mainstream. The American Psychological Association and Harvard Medical School and uh, the Journal of Clinical Psychological Science have all recently published some review studies about the impact of food on neurotransmitters and related studies. So the gut and the brain are connected through the nervous system, through a part of, and there's a nerve that goes directly from the belly upward and downward called the vagus nerve. And here's a couple of just research tidbits. So uh, Scientific American showed that 35% of people who are depressed are showing signs through a blood test of something called leaky gut. And I'm not gonna go into what that is. That's something that would be covered further in this seminar. In the other direction, starting with people that have known issues with irritable bowel syndrome, 50 to 90% of people with irritable bowel syndrome also are experiencing a psychiatric issue like anxiety or depression. So you can see that the influence is bi-directional and it's quite interesting how these things are connected, okay? Um, a little bit of a uh, research mental health tidbit for you also there's an Australian study that studied a thousand women, which is a fairly robust study. It's not the largest study you'll see, but it's also not so small to be not helpful. And it had three comparison groups. So um, again, we're moving more toward uh, a sense of something that has like a control group because there's three comparison arms rather than just one pre and post study. Okay, now I'm not going to tell you today exactly what the study found because the principle that I'm working with from Nourish Your Mood is that we start from inner wisdom. So until we've had an opportunity to practice together and have you make your own discoveries, I'm not going to tell you which foods, but I am going to tell you that the findings are strong and they, um, they have found some really interesting things. So in a study of a thousand women, we found that a certain dietary pattern was associated with lower risk of both anxiety and depression. They're looking at standard deviations, which is how much something differs in measurement from the norm. And we found 35% reduced odds for major depression and 32% reduced odds for anxiety with this certain way of eating. 
okay? I mean, we looked at some of the biological factors that can um, affect the relationship between food and mental health. So inflammation. So this is a super helpful thing for your body to do if you fall and you hurt your knuckle, you know, or you hurt your knee and you get red and hot and swollen and all these white blood cells go and the immune system starts taking care of the area. In an acute sense, it's a great friend to have. And in a sense where that becomes chronic, it can become a problem. Okay, and what we're finding is that chronic inflammation can be related to pain and it can be related also to mood states like depression and anxiety. We're also finding one of my favorite topics, which we will go into more in the seminar, which is the microbiome. A healthy, balanced microbiome can lead to happiness and mental health. And if we protect and love the microbiome, we start to learn which are the foods that are probiotic and prebiotic that can protect our own bellies. And it's very individual because there are certain foods that are right for one person and a part in their healing journey. And I found in my own journey that there's times when it's actually not right to do those foods yet and they will cause imbalance. So it's a individualized journey and it's stepwise. The fascinating thing is there's also research out of France that's showing that cravings and fussy eating or picky eating, that these desires that we have can actually be coming from the microbiome itself. So people can get into a lot of self-blame around this and think, oh, what's wrong with me? But in fact, um, there's something going on where your microbiome is sending you information and desires. So I feel a lot of responsibility because I'm the only one of us with a fork uh, to take care of the belly. And 95% of serotonin is made in the belly. So you want to do a little bit of practice together again. And again, thank you so much for your patience. And so let's do a little bit of practice together. So we're going to do a little mindful eating practice. And we're going to do mindful eating practice without actually eating. So um, thank you to those of you who um, had patience to come and join with us again. You're joining at a moment when we're just gonna do a little bit of practice together. Thank you for coming. Um, so here we go. Um, so this is a practice from my teacher, Jan Chosen Bays, about practicing with different hungers. So first I'd like to invite you just to pause for a moment and notice your sensations. So noticing your throat, noticing your belly, noticing your heart rate. Beautiful. Now asking yourself, how hungry are you right now from a scale of zero to 10? With zero being, I am not hungry at all. To 10 being, I am so hungry. I'm really want to eat a lot right now, okay? And so just noticing how hungry are you, rating that hunger on a scale of zero to 10. So over the course of the seminar, we're going to get in contact with a variety of hungers. So we're gonna start with I hunger, okay? So I'm gonna show you something. So when you see this, how hungry for this do you feel on a scale of zero to 10? With zero being, I'm not hungry for that at all, to 10 being, I am very hungry for that. I could really eat that right now. So just rating yourself from zero to 10 right now. How much I hunger do you have for this? And we can also look at something else. And noticing on a scale of zero to 10, how much eye hunger do you have for this right now? And without judgment, just noticing your answer. And um, we'll also experiment during the course with a variety of other hungers. There's actually nine hungers. And here's a hunger that you might notice when you notice this, noticing ear hunger. And from a zero to 10, how much ear hunger do you have right now? With zero being, that doesn't sound good. 
to 10 being, that sounds so good. I would love some right now. Too bad it's through video feed, okay? So these are some opportunities to practice with the hungers. And what did you notice while you're doing this? You can put in Q&A. If you're just joining, there's a Q&A on your screen and you can type in there. Your name will not be exposed to any of the other participants. What did you notice? Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, really beautiful reflections, everybody. So um, any questions? Oh, um, some more um, responses have just come in. I'm gonna take a look and see what people are sharing. Um, so um, yes, thank you so much um, for, for sharing those. Could not tell exactly what they are. Um, the sound didn't change my desire for hunger. Could not tell what it was, couldn't tell what the item was, or couldn't tell what I hunger was. So um, interesting. Okay, thank you. So um, you can notice these are some of the some of the challenges for doing it through the video feed because when I was doing it, I could also smell things, and um, nose hunger is definitely one. Um, Okay, um, thank you so much. Um, yeah, so um, noticing what the first food was and what it looked like. And one of the things we also practice with sometimes in mindful eating is what is it like when we see something and we don't quite know what it is yet? And how does that affect our hunger? And how does that affect our mindfulness? So thank you for that. So, um, I'm going to um, just um, abbreviate what I was going to say about my own healing journey. Um, but just to let you know that, as I mentioned earlier, I got interested in this because of my own journey. I started social work school having gone through a time of what so many people in modern life are having is contact with the computer and getting repetitive strain and noticing that I got into a pattern of chronic pain. And I really wanted to help people with mind-body healing. Um, and one of the things that was offered to me was mindfulness. And I found that mindfulness, both sitting mindfulness and yoga have been such good friends um, to accompany me on my journey and have really made a big difference. I also noticed that I felt motivated that I wanted something else. And one of the things people would say to me is, why don't you consider changing what you eat? And they would have ideas for me about it. And I would really want to just stick my fingers in my ears and say, la, 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 la. I don't know if any of you have felt like that, that you just did not want to change what you eat. You know, it's so personal and it's so hard to change. And one of the things I also noticed is it was very different to read about the mind-gut connection in a book and to experience it. Because when I started having really prominent digestive issues, I was having really prominent mind issues. And I didn't start the digestive issues right away. But what happened is very likely a return of symptoms from having traveled and had a travel infection that returned about 15 years later. And that's when I had to really get serious about the connection with food and my well being. And what, when that was really intense, I was having so much trouble finding my nouns. Does anyone else have this? Like I couldn't get clear between lamp and fan and which one I wanted to say. Anyone else noticing things like this? Or I was asking my friend for his compost something and I was like, your compost facility? When I wanted to just say compost bin. Anyone else noticing things like this with their mind? So um, I want to share a little bit with you um, from, um, from the screen. Um, it'll go from just showing my video to um, giving you a little bit more um, in terms of slides, okay? And we're going to learn a little bit more. Would you want to learn a little bit more about the principles of eating with a brain in mind? And then we'll take some more questions. Before I go to the principles, are there any questions at this point? You can type a question in Q&A. Okay, if it shows up, I will 
I will address it. So um, that is not what I want to share and uh, stop that. And we're gonna try and share. Interesting. Okay. So um, I will pause on that. So here we go. I didn't want to share that. These slides. Okay, wonderful. So um, we are talking today about um, eating with the brain in mind. We're going to go to the beginning of the slideshow and we're going to view this as a slideshow. Okay, wonderful. So um, excellent, and you can still Q&A here. So um, we're talking today about eating with the brain in mind, and we practiced some mindful eating together. And um, question for you, how do people usually decide which foods to eat? Yeah, mm -hmm. excellent. And so what we're gonna look at today is um, other ways of deciding. Um, and this is what we're talking about by eating with the brain in mind. We're talking about um, choosing foods that are supportive of brain health and supportive of brain health for the individual who's eating it. Okay, so how do we make these decisions? We're looking at mindfulness. And by the way, because we got started late, we'll go till eight o'clock, okay? And it, it'll be recorded. You can view it tomorrow if you have to go. So mindfulness principles, curiosity, beginner's mind, and no judgment and no right answer. And I cannot emphasize enough how necessary it is to bring these principles when we're talking to food uh, where we are starting with so much internalized judgment of ourselves and externalized judgment from society about how we need to be. So we're just going to see, trying things and see what we learn. Trusting ourselves as our own best teacher, coach, and guide. You are your own best teacher. And these are some of the things that people who come to me might say, don't talk to me before I have coffee. Other people get increasingly annoying by the end of the day. Anyone notice this? I, uh, I work um, with couples in my work and so many couples fight in the evening. Now, part of that is, of course, you're fighting then because that's when you see each other. So you have the opportunity. But also sometimes, some couples have noticed that this is related to how much we were taking care of ourselves during the day and how that affects how we show up in the evening. Anyone having trouble with productivity after lunch, feeling annoyed with your afternoon meetings or feeling like a slump when you're trying to work on the computer? What about waking up at 4 a.m. with a to-do list, right? So these are some of the things that are relating to how we might nourish our mood through a 24-hour cycle, paying attention and seeing what might help and nourish ourselves during these different moments. So we're gonna experiment um, through eating with the brain in mind to find foods that will be our loyal friends, friends that give you that sense of intimacy, of connection, of trust, like getting a really good hug. This is really essential. Uh, the approach here is body positive, size positive, and food positive. It's influenced by a local researcher who's done research called Health at Every Size. We're looking at how most of what we have been told about the correlation between health and weight is not necessarily true. It's important for everybody to have a sense of that their body functions well. There are certain lab markers that can be useful. And often these are not as tied to weight as we have been led to believe. And there are ways that we will really look deeply at this question. And part of the reason this is important is because of its own important corrective to what's in the culture and what's often throughout medical care that's not necessarily 
true or helpful. And it's important to help calm the nervous system so that we can feel safe enough to learn and feel that we are not going to be judged and told that our bodies need to change. We are not here about that. We are here to take care of our well being from an emotional perspective. We're focusing and eating on the brain on mind on positive things like happiness, resilience, focus, sexuality, our energy, our emotional stability, and generosity. We're engaging the brain's approach system. So a lot of other teachers who are talking to you about food are going to be talking to you about don't eat this and don't eat this and don't eat this. In this class and in this approach, we are talking about foods to add in, foods that we can be abundant about, going things that we can go toward. And Tara Brock, who you may know, she's a beautiful mindfulness teacher and psychologist. She says, on any of the deep difficulties, we cannot change ourselves, transform with aversive judgment. Anyone struggling with major addiction, shame or grief or anger, you're not going to be able to judge your way out of that. You cannot make yourself change from hating yourself. When we go into self aversion, when the limbic system hijacks things, it cuts off the frontal cortex, which gives us perspective, which gives us humor, which gives us mindfulness. We get cut off from all of our resources. So this is really central to my approach. There are teachers that will say, take all of your food out of the cabinets and only eat the food that I say. And um, there are a lot of different things like this that you'll see that are really about removing. In this approach, we go through a long time together, um, six meetings before we start talking about anything that might not be supportive of brain health. And we're much more about going toward going toward certain foods and also really going toward your own loving, trusting heart. We're looking at how the brain and the body are factually a whole system. The gesture that I keep using for nutrition mental health is like giving you physical support, like a hand lifting you up from underneath. So you're still going through the same transformations and changes, contemplations and personal growth, and you're doing it from a place that's more biologically supported. Joyful, pleasurable, delicious, and varied. And we're looking at feeding the brain first. We're looking at how the brain is 60% fat. The brain uses 20% of the energy that we eat. And we'll be exploring which are some of the foods that might support our brain health. A lot of what we've been told about how fat impacts us health-wise has not been true. It's been really interesting for me to look at contemporary researchers who've been able to get old data sets from people from decades ago and look at their research and say, actually, there's something missing here, or actually the way they explain this was not true. Um, and a lot of this just keeps getting shared again. And so it seems true because it's repeated. So these are some of the principles that we'll be looking at and looking for foods that research has been shown to help mental health for some people, and then each person gets to have contact with them themselves and see if they're actually helpful to you as an individual. And we're always starting from the principle of love. Here's a principle of generosity. One in five people in Alameda County rely on the food bank. Um, and when you donate a dollar, they have a way to buy in bulk and buy $6 of food. So you can donate by going to Alameda Food Bank or your county where you are. Uh, I'm going to tell you about the course that's starting on October 27th, 2019. We'll be meeting one Sunday a month from 2 to 4.15 and the first Tuesday a month at 7 and that'll be a video call. And um, the video calls are going to be done through another service than the one that we use today that has more robust technical support. So we can see how that will be beneficial, right? Um, uh, each week in the course, you will get a new mindfulness practice and new foods to try. These are foods that have been shown by science to support mental health and time to see how your brain responds. And we're always working from the principle of love and loving ourselves. I'm going to stop the share and um, see what questions we have now. Um, and do we have any questions? Um, 
someone asked um, about habit and if you wanted to ask a little bit more about what you mean by habit um, feel free you don't have to reveal your name and I know that I mentioned about habit so um, over the nine months of the seminar um, you are going to receive seven mindful eating practices, seven mindfulness and compassion practices, six gorgeous colors of foods to try, and we'll be coloring in a color wheel and exploring eating the rainbow or sometimes called the brain bow. Uh, seven groupings of foods to try. And these are foods, again, that have been shown by research to help some people's brain health. And nine of your hungers to get to know. We practice a little bit with two of the hungers today. Trust in how to balance your mood during the day and confidence in how to nourish your mood over time. Also appreciation for your amazing body. So are there any questions? You can follow up with me tomorrow with more questions, but if there are any questions now while we're on the live Q&A, we'll do that. And then we're gonna do a ceremonial dedication, all of us together. Um, does anyone want to ask a question in the Q&A um, before we finish up? Anything that you're wondering about? There's a question coming up here. Let's see what this is about. What does it cost? Ah, wonderful question. Thank you so much. So I'm gonna to speak to that um, a little bit and, and know that this may, uh, this may change in future and I'm saving this video, but for the moment, um, the cost is offered on a sliding scale. And, uh, you can pay at whatever uh, level makes sense to you for your own background and there's no need to tell me anything about it. I'm keeping the cost quite low because I'm passionate about making this information available. So um, right now, the, the base rate at this time is around $25 an hour. When people are getting into contact with a one-to-one -one practitioner, who practices in functional medicine or nutrition, mental health, um, that, can be, that can get quite expensive quite quickly. And I have much respect for the practitioners in this field, and that might end up being a part of some people's healing journey at some point. But the way the class is being offered, it's being offered on a sliding scale in a wheelchair accessible space and um, at a fairly low hourly rate and you have a choice to pay all at once at centerforstressreduction.com and go to Nourish Your Mood and sign up, or you can do three payments if that's easier. I'm going to look at other questions. If you had just one food to recommend, what would it be? Um, yeah, it's a great question. And um, so in terms of what foods, one way to really start exploring that for yourself would be to experiment with changing up your breakfast. So there's about four breakfast experiments that you can try. No breakfast. Whatever you're currently doing for breakfast. So for some of us, that's like having a bar while we're having another hand on the steering wheel or while we're walking to the train, okay? Um, or whatever you're currently doing for breakfast. The other breakfast option is something like kind of what you might imagine as like a more robust kind of weekend breakfast or brunch breakfast. Try having that, but on a day that you're doing your regular weekday. And then the fourth option is dinner for breakfast and have a really a strong meal at the start of your day. So um, that's one thing that I would suggest to you, thanks for the question, as a way to start. Um, is try those four options and see what you learn. Any other questions before we do what's called a dedication of merit together? Okay, other questions you can follow up with me individually tomorrow. Um, and um, 
I really want to thank all of you for your participation and especially for your patience with the wonders of technology and the way it took us a while to get started together. I really appreciate that. Um, and all of the participation you've been doing through the Q&A has made such a difference. Um, I look forward to seeing you in class or someone else that you would like to let know about this. I will send some follow-up information to everyone tomorrow so you can see more about um, how you could participate um, more in the class. So every time there's a class meeting, you will be practicing mindfulness together, mindful eating and mindfulness and self-compassion practice. You'll be practicing mindful speaking and listening with the other students in the class and sharing about what you've been learning. And when you come back, after you've had some month of contact with certain foods and certain practices, you'll come back and I'll show you the research about why I had recommended those particular foods. And so you'll be complementing your inner wisdom with the outer wisdom of what the research is showing. Okay. So this is from Robin Kimmerer, um, the author of Braiding Sweetgrass. Maybe it was the smell of ripe tomatoes or the Orioles singing or that certain slant of light on a yellow afternoon and the beans hanging thick around me. It just came to me in a wash of happiness that made me laugh out loud. The land loves us back. Now the plant scientist who sits at my desk and wears my clothes and sometimes borrows my car, she might cringe to hear me assert that a garden is a way that the land says, I love you. I have to explain things to her sometimes. So um, thank you all for your dedicated participation. And by dedicating the merit, what we mean is that by us gathering together and practicing together, even in all the different locations that we you may be in, to be connected to each other through this format, by being together in whatever way we are together, we have accumulated some positive merit. And I see there's one more Q and A just before we um, sign out. Um, um, you're welcome. And so. Um, we're going to send out these good wishes from what we have accumulated from our time together. May all beings everywhere be nourished. You can keep in mind a place in the world that needs our loving care or a person that you know that needs that kind of loving attention and sending that out into the world. There is enough for all in the world if we find ways to share it together. May all beings be happy. May all beings be nourished. May all beings be safe. May all beings be free. Thank you.